Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. And we love talking about workforce development, collaboration, poverty fighting, and so much more. We're honored to be joined by Jared Barnett, CEO of Slingshot Memphis, and also John Martinez, Vice President and Director, Program Development with MDRC. And we'll talk all about what that means, but how are you two guys doing? Hey, doing really well, uh, Jeremy. Thanks so much for, for having us on today. Doing great, Jeremy. Really, really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. Absolutely. So let's start, John, on your end, because we'll talk about national, we'll talk about local, and we'll talk about this collaboration. So, John, on your end, give us a little bit of background, because really cool what you all are doing when you talk about research, development, partnerships. But go ahead and describe the work you do with MDRC. Sure. Um, I would say, uh, you know, just to keep it really short and tight, uh, MDRC is a nonprofit, nonpartisan education and social policy research firm and intermediary. We've been around for 50 years. And um, in a nutshell, our focus is on building evidence and using that evidence to inform and improve public policy and practice. And that's exactly what we're doing um, in partnership with Slingshot. Absolutely. You all have offices from New York, D.C., L.A., all over. And so talk about kind of the team and that side on your end in terms of what you look for and, and how you operate. Give us a little bit, a little bit more of a deeper dive on that side. Absolutely. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, at our core, we are uh, a research firm. So I think uh, the assumption is that it's a bunch of researchers sitting across these four offices but in actuality, that, that application of that research is a huge part of our DNA. So about a third of our staff are actually not researchers by training. They're program operators, they're administrators, they're former teachers. And so across all of the policy domains that we work in, we have the folks building evidence, and then we have the folks that really understand in a, in a deep way the systems that could really benefit from those uh, from those uh, from that evidence building, and that allows us to really develop actionable plans around how do you apply that evidence to really make a difference in terms of, of policy and practice. I think all that is the perfect parlay over to Slingshot Memphis when you talk about research, evidence-based practices, action plans, so much more. So, Jared, go ahead and give us some background on Slingshot Memphis. Yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, so Slingshot Memphis is a poverty fighting center of influence. And at our core, what we're trying to do is answer what's effective alleviating poverty. And our, our goal behind that is to cut through a lot of the uncertainty, a lot of the questioning around, well, if I help this, is it working? Is this really working or not? And, and provide a very clear way of saying, yeah, this is effective at alleviating poverty. And this is how it could be more effective. Uh, and why? Right. Getting to that why part of it. And so our goal is to make uh, and empower stakeholders with the information they need to make the most effective decisions possible. Right. In business, you wouldn't make a decision without understanding the financial implications. We want to bring that same rigor, that same approach to poverty fighting, where you wouldn't make a decision unless you know it's having the best outcome possible for people who are experiencing poverty as we try and create more opportunities for success. When you talk about this collaboration, it's specifically focused on the gaps for workforce development. So give us a little bit of background, Jared. We'll start with you on what led you to establish this collaboration, this partnership with MDRC focused on identifying the gaps within poverty and workforce development. Our relationship with MDRC actually goes back to 2019. And so uh, a lot of times when we got started, we would use a lot of MDRC's studies to help inform our our uh, our work. We would research their research uh, as we we started our work. And the first time we worked together, we actually had them study slingshot to help understand is our methodology as effective as it could be? What are ways that we could make it better? And what are some of the strong points so that we could continue what's strong and, and enhance what could be enhanced? And so that was a really powerful way for us to learn uh, given that we go and study other organizations' effectiveness, we wanted to do that ourselves. And from there, we realized that we had a unique opportunity to couple our unique strengths to try and do something in Memphis to help the ecosystem here. And through the, the course of looking at Memphis, understanding what each of our organization's unique strengths were, we felt there was a really powerful opportunity that we could assist in workforce development 
but specifically for workforce development for people who are experiencing poverty, which is often an overlooked kind of segment of the population when it comes to workforce because they tend to be the hardest to serve. And so we felt like because of our, again, uh, our focuses and, and the synergies, using that fun word, uh, that we could really do something unique here, uh, again, focused uniquely on people who are experiencing poverty and, and their workforce barriers and the things that they would need to really benefit from the economic development in Memphis. John, what kind of excites you about this opportunity to work together and you know, when you look at what the outcomes could be in terms of the potential opportunity to create change, what excites you about this? So I think there's a few things that MDRC and myself personally find really, really exciting about this. One, we have a long history of working in Memphis. I myself have worked on a number of projects in Memphis. I love going to Memphis. Um, and so this was a, a, a nice chance to be able to kind of build on that prior work and continue our partnership. The second thing I'll, I'll say, and I'm going to use that word, Jared, that synergy and that alignment, I think there's a lot of synergy and alignment between our mission and our goals and Slingshot's mission and Slingshot's goals. And our two organizations just complement each other so well. Um, and that's not always easy to find. And I think we were really, really excited about that. Um, I think a third thing is um, it was an opportunity, and we'll get more into the details, but it's an opportunity to combine building and using data and evidence to develop solutions that are going to directly benefit Memphians experiencing poverty. And that's that's something that's really exciting. There's an opportunity to elevate the voices of participants themselves that are navigating the systems to ensure that their experiences and their perspectives inform the solutions. That is such a key part of this project. And as Jared noted, it's often overlooked. And so we want to meet the participants of these systems where they are, build on their strengths, and reduce the challenges so that they can be successful in kind of navigating these systems. And then the last thing I'll say is I think it's building on all the exciting things that are happening in Memphis right now. Um, and we'll talk about that in more detail. But the reality is with all of that opportunity, there has to be a focus on actually getting initiatives launched. That's just the reality. Anytime you have things like this going on, we all understand that that when you're in the midst of this, the focus really has to be on kind of getting the things off the ground. And it's hard to take a step back and think about things like alignment and who's benefiting. And I think we, through this partnership, are in a position to play that role of being able to take a step back. And we can do that in tandem with all the good things that are happening in Memphis and really amplify that success. So I would say in a nutshell, those are the things that um, excite us most about um, this, op this opportunity and this partnership with Slingshot. Yeah, let's let's stay on that word opportunity because I, I want Jared on your end and then John too to piggyback on this, but there's a lot of opportunity. Opportunity youth, when you look at those who have the potential to be able to take advantage of the jobs and, and these you know careers that are coming into Memphis, you have the opportunity of all the investment that's being made in workforce development, job creation and all those, and you have a lot of investment with federal dollars and you know state and local dollars that are being poured into opportunities to create these pipelines. And so there's a lot of opportunity there, but it's how do you close those gaps? So Jared, when you look at that word opportunity and kind of the definitions that I threw out there, how do you kind of paint the picture around all of these opportunities? I think of this as we've got all this momentum, all of this energy, all these resources, right, being funneled towards workforce development. Um, my fear is that if we don't actually know what we're trying to solve for, it's going to end up being a lot of effort, a lot of good intention. And in five, 10 years from now, we're all going to look back and say, what happened as a result of that? Right? And that's not what anybody wants. But the challenge is that the more we talk to stakeholders across the community, the less we realize that people actually know why our employment pathway is not working for people experiencing poverty, right? We have 25% of our population of Memphis that's in poverty, yet every day in the news, you see companies complaining about hiring and retaining talent. And so if those were if that those pathways were working well, we wouldn't see that in the news. And so, but nobody knows exactly why. And so the opportunity I'm excited about here is that that Slingshot and MDRC are, are trying to help fulfill to maximize the benefit of these other opportunities is why, right? Why are these pathways not working? 
And let's get a clear understanding of those root causes, because with that knowledge, we can then make sure that all the other efforts, all the other resources, all that intention is actually addressing the real needs. Uh, and we can kind of cut through the, the ambiguity. We can cut through the guessing game and can have that clear understanding in a way that's empowering, just like anything else, right? A, a good analogy I like to share is that, you know, I wouldn't let a doctor cut me open and explore in me for a couple hours trying to figure out what he should do surgery on, right? I'm just, maybe he gets it right. Maybe she gets it right. Maybe they don't, right? I'm going to have them do all sorts of diagnostics, run the blood tests, like take the x-rays or CAT scans or whatever. I want them to know what, what's wrong with me before they go in and come up with a solution. And that's what we're trying to do when it comes to workforce here is help provide that evidence that empowers people to know what we need to solve if we want to see meaningful change particularly for people who are experiencing poverty. John, go ahead and piggyback up on that in terms of opportunity and what that looks like on your end. At the same time, I've got to think Memphis becomes, in your case, a lens because other cities are struggling with these very issues. And so when you look at your ability to look at the national landscape, taking these lessons and the why, understanding the why, could be really powerful in terms of a broader application. Absolutely, Jeremy. I mean, that's such a great point. Um, I think what we're, you know, what we're doing um, in Memphis is, I am confident is going to benefit Memphis, and most importantly, benefit those Memphians who are living in in in, uh, in poverty. But from our perspective, this is also an opportunity to really lift up all the lessons that come out of this work and provide opportunities for other communities to really benefit from this. And the, so the ability to leverage what we're learning in Memphis and the approach that we're taking in Memphis, I think has tremendous, tremendous uh, implications for how we approach trying to tackle these very real problems that other cities are also facing. So a real opportunity for, for Memphis to, to essentially be an exemplar around the country around how to tackle and uh, tackle these challenges and develop solutions rooted in evidence and rooted in the experiences of folks that are actually trying to navigate these systems. Jared, go ahead and talk about, you know, where you are in this process, how the community can support the effort and get involved. Go ahead and dive into uh, taking action. Yeah. So we've kind of divided the project up into three phases. So the first phase is kind of analyzing the data and really trying to get an analytical understanding of the workforce landscape, particularly again for people who are, are dealing with poverty. The second phase will then be around primary research, which will include not only um, getting the, the lived experience of people who are trying to navigate these employment pathways from a place of, of uh, from poverty, but also the various stakeholders that are you know providing workforce services, the jobs, the policies, the funding. Uh, and then the third phase is the action phase, right? So as John mentioned, Part of it is not just understanding, but it's how do you apply that understanding? And that's where heavy collaboration will be a part of this. So how do we work with stakeholders to take what we've learned and make sure that's being addressed in these other workforce efforts that are going on so that it's not one other thing to add on top of everything else, but it starts to fit into these other things where there's a natural home and ownership for that. And so it's uh, it's exciting for me around that. And I think some of the, the neat things so far is that we're already starting to learn. And I think going back to what John shared, this is a unique model where we're not coming in and saying, we think this is the solution. Let's test it out here in Memphis. What we're saying is let us go learn what those problems are before we think about what the solutions could be. And so in this data analysis phase, we are looking at the population, understanding what are the demographics? What are the educational attainments? What is the, the uh, employment situation? Uh, what kind of health factors are they dealing with? What are the different workforce services that are in Memphis? Where are they located? What do they offer? What do they not offer? Uh, how is funding and other policies potentially influencing people's ability to access uh, you know, technical training that could lead to higher wage jobs? Uh, and how might those be in, being enabled and what impediments might be there? And so um, it's neat to be able to start from a, you know, with a blank sheet in a way and really trying to let the data guide what we're learning and what we then go and do versus coming in and saying, I think it might be this. Let's see if that works or not. It's just a much more, uh, for me, exciting way to really get at like what's happening. 
Yeah, well, just like in life, everything is way more complex than you think. And so to your point, by asking the questions and coming in and saying, hey, you know, we genuinely want to learn and then be able to figure this out and apply to understand that why really can lead to powerful outcomes for our community. And so where would you encourage for each of you, where would you encourage us to go to learn more about each of your organizations, but also to specifically help lift this project? You can go to either of our organization's websites to learn about Slingshot, so slingshotmemphis.org or mdrc.org, uh, and learn about our organizations. We are developing a website, so our, our project that we're collaborating on is called Memphis Works for Everyone. Uh, we call it MemWorks for short, uh, and so the website we're developing is memworks.org, and that's where we'll share our approach, and as we develop insights, we'll, we'll share those on that, that website. Um, in terms of ways you can help, um, connect us with organizations who are interested in workforce development. Um, any stakeholders involved, we want to be engaged with. We've talked to Ford uh, and the, their uh, their philanthropic group. We've talked to TCAT, Southwest Tennessee Community College, Memphis Shelby County Schools, Greater Memphis Chamber. Uh, I could go on and on on, on the organizations that we're collaborating with because we know we're not going to be able to do this on our own and that we want to be able to partner with them uh, in that effort. Um, we're still fundraising for this. So we have the funding to get this project off the ground and, and we've made some great progress, uh, but we continue to need support to continue to allow us to do the next 12 months of, of research and action planning so that we can give Memphis that evidence base to know what really the root causes are that we need to be addressing. The, the other thing that I would say is, um, you know, stay tuned, stay engaged, stay connected. We're really excited about what we're going to learn from this project and we are confident it is really going to make a difference for for memphians who are who are low income um who, who are living in poverty and um and we're excited about uh you know what what's going to come out of this project one in three opportunity youth in memphis are living in poverty right now so that's right now that would be in the in the sense that we've looked at it we've looked at it from 18 to 25 years old that's the population one in three are experiencing poverty Another thing we've learned is that when you look at the workforce services that are offered in the city, unfortunately, we're seeing a pretty high concentration in places like Midtown, East Memphis, downtown that aren't very proximate to where those services might be needed the most. And so in some of the communities where they're needed the most, you know, South Memphis, uh, Westwood, uh, Berclair, those areas, there's very little uh, that is available for those communities from a workforce development space. Um, which would suggest that we might need to think about how are we, where are we providing those services and how are we ensuring people have access to those? And so these are just some of the nuggets that we're finding so far that we're excited to package and, and lead into some really strong hypotheses of what those barriers might be. Well, definitely excited for what the future holds in terms of this study, the impact on the community and so much more. And so definitely appreciate you both coming on the show. So Jared Barnett, CEO of Slingshot Memphis, John Martinez, Vice President, Director of Program Development with MDRC. Greatly appreciate you and your amazing teams. Thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Jeremy. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jeremy.